about the age of 15 here lately, I've been um, doing it on my own. When I started going like to doctor visits by myself, I was probably 16, 17. By the time I was 18, it was more or less all up to me. It's very different when you have to take on that role by yourself. Okay, I feel like having my mom in the room with me made it a whole lot easier because every time they asked a question that I didn't know, I wouldn't look like a deer in the headlights or something. <laughs> the only way that you're going to have any power over anything is knowledge. If you have knowledge, then you have power. The purpose of this video is to help youth and young adults communicate more effectively with their doctors and other healthcare professionals. You will hear from several young people about their experiences and how they have learned to be good communicators. You will also learn a simple technique that will help you feel more comfortable and confident talking with your doctors. It's called GLAD, G-L-A-D-D. -D. Give information, listen and learn, ask questions, decide on a treatment plan, and do it. Give detailed and complete information about what you've been doing to stay healthy and about your symptoms, thoughts, and concerns. Listen carefully and learn all you can. Ask questions and keep on asking until you feel satisfied. Decide on a plan for doing what needs to be done to help you be as healthy as you can. And the second D is for do, doing your part in following the plan. If you think about it, your doctors probably ask many of the same questions every time you see them. Write down the questions that your doctor usually asks. It's okay to ask your family for help remembering what these questions are. Pick some questions you would like to answer at your next doctor's visit and let your parents know that you would like to be the one to answer these questions. It's okay to write down your notes and take them with you. She would like kind of be the mediator to kind of pull it in and pull me in so that I can actually talk for myself. And my mom was very, you know, very good with that. She was just like, you know, don't ask me because the doctor would basically bypass me, look at me and still go ask my mother, hey, you know, so is she eating this, this, this? And my mother would be like, well, ask her, you know, she would know the best and that's how, you know, I got very involved. And Answer questions by myself and, and I was always, uh, you know, a part of the clinic visit. I was always, I wasn't, I didn't ever feel like I was just being talked about. It wasn't until I actually had to experience it on my own is when I did learn the skills I did in terms of, you know, writing things down and knowing how to talk to people and, you know, stuff like that. Like, that was my own experience. Because I couldn't, and then I realized I couldn't call mommy and daddy for everything. You know, every time my stomach was hurting me or every time my head was hurting me or my leg was hurting, you know, my mom and dad wasn't always there to rub it for me. What did I have to do? Try to figure out how to get, take away the pain for myself how to stand on my own two feet, you know, that's what, that's what it, I needed. I guess early on I always kind of remember being able to, you know, rattle off all the medicines and the dosages I was on, um, especially when the nurse came in and took down all my vital signs and, you know, asked me what meds I was on and whatnot every time. You know, I was always able to, to relate that. Um, Mom very rarely helped me with that after I could, you know, grasp, you know, dosages and, and different types of medication. When answering your doctor's questions, you may not want to admit to skipping your medications or therapies or eating junk food, but it's important to be honest. For example, if you say you're taking all of your pills every day, but your lab tests are not what they should be, then the doctor may increase the amount of medication or change to a different medication, when all you really need to do is get on schedule. Kids have a hard time they feel like they have to lie to be perfect, and they don't. They should just be honest, and then they can be perfect. It's also important to tell the whole story. Maybe you're not taking some of your medications because you don't like the side effects, or because you don't like to be seen going to the school nurse's office. Or maybe you're not getting enough rest because you have too much homework, or it takes you much longer than others to get your work done. Maybe you just want to go out with your friends and have a good time and not pay attention to your doctor's advice. 
It's important to let your doctor know so that you can work together to find an alternative or a compromise that works. Your doctors will also probably ask about symptoms. When you first felt them, how often and when they occur and how long they last. Detailed information is helpful. Your parents probably use a notebook that they bring with them to your medical appointments. Now that you're older and probably don't want your parents checking up on you all the time, you might want to take over responsibility for keeping track of this type of information and providing it to your doctors at medical appointments. I took a notepad and I wrote down questions. You know, I wrote them down, you know, things about my medicine, ways I was feeling as well, because sometimes, you know, a lot of times doctors ask you, what were you feeling? And you'll be like, well, I think I had a headache or, you know, this is happening. And he's like, okay, well, describe it. What kind of pain was it? What kind of this was it? And you, you don't know how to describe it. So I've kind of took from what they'll say, well, on a scale from one to 10, you know, what's, what did you rate your pain? So I'll do that, like I'll, I, you know, keep notes of myself. And then when I went there, I, these are the symptoms I'm having. As you get older, it becomes more and more important to be knowledgeable about your health condition and treatments and to be prepared to do the talking. For example, you might have to go to an emergency room by yourself, or you may be in the hospital where your parents can't be with you 24 hours a day. There was a time there was this, this doctor, well, it was a resident doctor, that was dealing with me, and he wanted to, you know, give me a medicine that I knew I wasn't supposed to take. But because I was young, I guess he didn't think I knew any better. But pretty much it was, you know, in the middle of the night, I was in the hospital, and I told him off, like, you know, I was just like, who do you think you are, da 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 you know, I just, <laughs> I told him off, like, you know, I don't even know how old I was, but I was old enough to know, because my mother always taught me, and my parents always taught me, you know, respect your elders no matter what. So, when, it's funny, I, when the, the, the head doctor came in to talk to me, he was like, are you, you know, told him, like, are you crazy, you can't, you would have killed her, you know, but at the same time, my mother took me to the side and was like, you know, you don't talk to people like that, no matter what, you know, because you, you just, you're not getting across to you, because maybe he would have listened to you, but maybe the, your attitude and the way you were trying to explain what you didn't want to happen to you, he shut down because you were being disrespectful. A doctor visit is a time to listen carefully and learn as much as you can about your condition and what can be done to help keep you healthy. Doctors usually spend part of the medical visit teaching their patients about the medical condition. When you were younger, your parents were responsible for learning this information. But now that you're older, you can become an active listener and learn as much as you can. You can also take notes, draw pictures or diagrams, or even use a voice recorder. Anything that helps you listen and learn. Ask the questions that are on your mind. Your parents may have their questions, but you have questions too. There are lots of reasons why some teens feel shy about asking questions. The doctor seems to be busy, in a hurry. Or in the past, your mom or dad asked all the questions. Or you don't want to seem dumb by asking about things that you think you should already know or understand. Or you feel uncomfortable about asking certain personal private things, especially if your parents are in the room. Or maybe you want to get it over with quickly and just get out of there. You know, because the doctors, you know, they don't have as much time. They got to see a, you know, this patient, you only get about 15 minutes for a patient and kind of get everything in. And as I realized I was being ignored sometimes, that's when I realized I needed, I needed help and I wasn't getting through to them. So I needed to get tips and that's when I went to outside resources to help me, you know. So I didn't really practice. I just wrote them down and then you know, <laughs> I've had like my caseworker or like a nurse that I was really close to that worked with the doctor going with me to kind of help me mediate at first or maybe my mom or something helped me, you know, be forced. And then after that, I kind of would practice runs with other people. That's when I got it. I was just like, I can handle this now. It's true. Doctors are busy and they don't want to waste time. Who does? But if they see that you're serious and you truly want to learn, they'll usually take the time to explain things to you. Doctors want their patients to be knowledgeable, and they're happy when their patients take the time to think about their questions or bring written questions with them. If you've had your health condition for a long time, it might seem that you don't really have any questions. But take a minute now and ask yourself this. 
Do I really understand what causes my health condition or disability? Do I understand all the ways my health condition affects my body now? Do I know all the ways that my health condition might affect my body when I get older? Do I understand how my medicine works? Do I understand what will happen if I don't take each of my medicines or do each of my treatments when I'm supposed to? Be honest with yourself. If you can't answer each of these five questions fully, ask your doctor and find out. Write out your questions using a computer or paper and pencil. Take a copy of your questions with you to the doctor's office. Do some internet research, then compare what you find on the internet with what your doctor has to say. If you have questions you want to ask your doctor in private, tell your parents you'd like to speak with the doctor alone. If you're younger than 18, your parents have to give their consent. But if you're over 18, it's your legal right and it's confidential. A lot of times when you're in the room with your parents and the doctor, you want to ask the doctor stuff, but you don't want to ask the doctor stuff in front of your parents. And then I, and I guess it, it creates more stress because you want to ask the question, but you're afraid of your parents' reaction or your guardian's reaction. Dr. Gardner, at my most recent physical, definitely expressed extreme satisfaction with the fact that I was going there by myself, the fact that I was branching away from my parents. Um, and he felt freer asking me more personal questions. Before you begin, it's a good idea to set the stage. Tell the doctor you have some questions you'd like to ask. You can say, I have some questions. Is this a good time to ask them or should I wait until the end of the appointment? Ask one question at a time. If you don't understand the doctor's answer, ask him or her to explain it again. There are no dumb questions. Your healthcare provider wants you to have the knowledge you need. Doctors often explain things in complicated words without even realizing it. If you don't understand, you might say, What does that mean in plain English? Could you explain that to me again? Please tell me more about that. Could you write that down for me? Where can I find more information about this? Is there something you can give me to read? As a doctor is explaining something new to you, take notes. That way, if there's some part of it you don't understand, you can go back and ask before you leave the office. Then it's time to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to try a different medication, a medical test, a new device, a surgery? You need to discuss the pros and cons and come to a decision. If you don't like some part of your treatment plan, talk with your doctor. There may be some alternatives. If you're under 18, your parents are legally responsible but parents and doctors should understand your need to express your thoughts and feelings about your treatments. When you turn 18, you will have the right to decide for yourself. You owe it to yourself to get all the information you can before you make a decision. What are the pros and cons? What are the possible consequences of not following a recommended treatment? You might want to consult with your parents too, since they have lots of experience with your health condition and can provide support when you need it. It helps to set the stage with the doctor before starting a discussion. You could say, I have some ideas about my health care treatment plan. Can we talk about this? The more direct and upfront you are, the more the doctor will like it and the more likely he or she is to respond well. Start with the positive. Tell the doctor which treatments or medicines you want to stick with. Then tell the doctor which treatments you want to change and why. The more honest and specific you are, the more likely the doctor is to respond positively. Ask the doctor what impact a change in your plan of care might have on you in one year and in five years. When the doctor talks, even if you don't like what he or she has to say, sit quietly and listen. Then, when it's your turn, speak as clearly and politely as you can. In the end, it will work to your advantage if you come across as respectful and mature. The last D is for do. Every visit with a doctor should result in a plan about what each person is going to do after the visit. Then it's time to follow through. There are a number of things that you and your doctors can do that will help make sure that everyone understands their roles and responsibilities. These include 
asking the doctor to send you a written copy of the plan in the mail. Taking notes during the visit and going over these notes with the doctor before the end of the visit. Asking the doctor for a chart or checklist or making one for yourself so you can keep track of what you're supposed to do and check things off as you do them. Because I'm, I'm very forgetful. In my, I don't know if this could work for anyone else, but in my room, like right before you walk out the door, there's a calendar about this tall, and it's dry erase, and it hangs on my wall, and um, I just write everything on it. So I know when I walk out my room door, I'm like, that's what I got to do today. You, young people, you, you have to take responsibility for yourself. So in order for people to respect you, you have to know what you're talking about. If you're just sitting there and looking, they're just going to assume that you don't know anything or they're going to assume that you don't know what's best for you, yourself. But if you can let them know by just information you've gathered and knowing that you've stepped outside of not just what they've told you, but what you've gathered on your own, then they're, you know, they're like, oh, hmm, well, you know, and then also telling the doctors, hey, I want to be involved with what's going on. Don't, you know, depends on how you want your delivery. Talk to the doctor. Tell them, you know, once you get into with the doctor, you know, if, if time allotted, tell them, you know, hey, I'm this type of person, you know, try not to cover everything up with me, you know, try to explain to me because I really want to be involved in what's going on with me. And, or can you give me some websites or even at the nurse, ask people, ask questions as, you know, you're older, as an older adult, I mean, you start using the computer from your 13 now, you know, we're in the computer age, so, I mean, you could go and look it up and then people will realize, take you seriously. I think it's just, as I said, having knowledge. I've been to plenty of doctors that are unfamiliar with my disability, but I'm the kind of person that I give everybody a chance. And if they're willing to listen, I'm willing to tell them about my problem and how they might can help me overcome some of the difficulties I have. Now that you're in your teens, it's time for you to be more in charge of your health care. You can be more in charge next time you go to a doctor's visit by being a good communicator. Try the GLAD technique. Give information, listen, ask questions, decide and do. You'll be glad you did.